Greetings, Terrarians, Chaos here. I wanted to start this episode off by pointing out the fact that the channel has already hit 100,000 subscribers. I didn't think we'd hit that goal in just over a day from when I made the request, but thanks to an amazing shout out in the Twitterverse, you all seem to have absolutely crushed my expectations, and I thank you very much for that. Welcome everybody to the channel and a huge thank you to everybody who's been here up till now. You all are amazing. So this upcoming Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, I will be releasing a milestone celebration video. In fact, this will be my first premiere video. A premiere video is kind of a mix between a live stream and a standard video. The video plays as it normally would, however, there is a live chat going on throughout the entirety of the first viewing where you all can come and chat with me live as we watch the milestone video together. After the event ends, the video remains on the channel as a standard video. So be sure to mark your calendars for this Saturday, the 25th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. I'll leave various other time zone equivalents in the description so you don't need to look it up yourself. For part of the video, I was thinking about having a question and answer segment, so let me know in the comments what questions you would like me to answer. Mark your comment with hashtag QA so that I can easily find your questions. Moving on to today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create an up and down Hoik elevator that I used in Game Raiders Laboratory build. There are many Hoik elevators out there, and the ones that I've made in the past have strictly been up on one side and down on the other, requiring two different elevator shafts. But this time, I finally came up with a design that crams both directions into a single area. The materials that you will need to make this elevator are a building block of your choice. I will be going with tin plating and copper plating so that you can easily tell the difference between the two and see what I'm doing, platforms of your choice, wires, actuators, weighted pressure plates, player logic sensors, faulty logic lamps, off logic lamps, a logic gate of your choice as any of them will work in this setting, and junction boxes. Over here we have the first floor of the elevator and where the entrance to the elevator will be and up here we have the destination, the second floor, where we want the elevator to end. I'm going to start by building the tunnel for the elevator and for me it's important to start at the top because the top of the elevator needs to be in a specific location for this to work properly, otherwise it's not going to be as clean or as smooth. The bottom is not so important. As long as you can reach it, you don't necessarily have to fly. Like, we can jump up pretty high. So as long as you can reach the bottom of the elevator, that's not as important. The top of the elevator, however, always has to be in the same spot. So what I'm going to do is create a tunnel with a two block gap down the middle. So the tunnel will be four wide with a space of two down the middle. And then I'm going to grab my actuation device. Now, if you're carrying a presserator and you have that in your inventory, it doesn't need to be equipped. You have this button here that you can press to turn on your actuation device, which means anytime you place a block, it'll use your actuator. So if I place a few blocks right there, you can see that we have actuators. So what I'm going to do is fill up this elevator shaft with blocks of four, like this. And all of these will have actuators. I turned off the wiring there, but they all do have actuators. So we're just going to fill this up real quick. Now at the top of the elevator, working my way down, I'm going to start sloping this into an arrow. And the arrow is going to look just like this. And what it's going to do is the top part of the arrow will push you up the hoik while the bottom part of the arrow will push you down the hoik. Now a little tip for shaping these, if you start at the bottom left, you can see that it only takes two swings to do those, including this one here, if we work in a counterclockwise direction, and then three swings there. If you were to start at the top, we have to do three swings there, three swings there, four swings there, and four swings there. So you actually get more swing action if you start from the top in a clockwise manner than if you start at the bottom and go counterclockwise. It's just the way that hammering physics work in this game, but it's always best to start bottom to top and then left to right to get as few swings as necessary. Now that these are all hammered, and again, they all have actuators on them, 
I'm going to grab my actuation rod and using my smart cursor, I'm just going to push all of these into the background really quick. You could do this with wiring, but again, just having this actuation rod makes things much faster. So all of these are actuated now and we can fly up and down this tunnel easily. We're going to start by making the part of the elevator that will carry you upwards. And to start that off, we're going to grab a logic sensor player above. And we're gonna place this right next to the very tip of the first arrow at the bottom of the elevator. It can be to the left or to the right, and it doesn't have to be one block next to it. As you see here when I grab my grand design, it's got this box here that indicates what range it can detect a player in. So as long as the player enters that range, the actuation will happen and it'll send out a signal. So this sensor could even be a little bit further to the left or to the right. But for this case, I'm just gonna place it right here. And if I just run a series of wires straight into these actuators here at the very top, and I grab my actuation rod and I activate the top of every one of these arrows, just the top, you'll see that these arrows are what in fact carry me up the elevator. So I'll just get rid of my wings real quick and we're gonna jump into here and you'll see it shoots us straight up to the top. And that's because it uses the hoik glitch turned mechanic. So once I enter this logic sensor range, this activates this block, which grabs onto my head, which pushes me up through the block. This, gra this block grabs my head, pushes me on up, and so on and so forth until I reach the very top. Now this is why it is important for this to be right here at the very top. If the floor had been one level higher, you would see that we would end right here and we'd have to step up. If you were two levels off, we would end up in here and you'd have to jump out of the elevator. And that's not what I'm after. I want it to be flush with the floor, which is why it's important for me to start the elevator level with the floor with this first arrow. But as you could see here, whenever the elevator is used like this, this floor is now solid. So while we could travel up the elevator and it up here, we don't have any way of traveling back down the elevator through this solid block. So all of these tiles need to be actuated the entire time so that you can freely enter the elevator from either side, but it needs to detect whenever you're at the bottom so that it can actuate the right blocks to send you up and it needs to know when you're at the top so that it can do the opposite. So in order to do that, we need to leave everything actuated and I'm going to get rid of this little bit of wire here because it won't be able to hook up straight to the arrow. It's gonna to have to hook up to a little bit of circuitry. So we need to build a player detector system beneath the elevator so that it can tell when we're down here. And so I'm going to be grabbing another logic player sensor and we're going to be placing this 11 blocks beneath the bottom arrow. Now it doesn't have to be precisely 11 blocks. You can place it closer to the arrow, but you cannot place it any further than 11 blocks. So I'm just going to place this block right here and I'll demonstrate why it has to be within this range. So as you can see, here are the two hitboxes for the player logic sensors. Whenever I enter this one, oh, let me clear out the dirt block there so you can see it. When I enter this one, it lights up. When I enter this one, it lights up. And the way that they're overlapped right here, these two boxes, my player can enter both at the same time. So this one's lit and that one's lit. We want these to be able to light at the same time because this one is the detector. It's gonna say, hey, the player is at the bottom of the elevator. This one up top is the trigger. It's what's going to activate the elevator. Now, it's going to only activate the elevator if the detector says this is where the player's at when you trip the trigger. If you don't have that detector activated, the trigger won't do anything. So we need to make sure these are in range of each other. So this could be closer, but it can't be any further because then you will no longer be able to reach both at the same time. Now, the circuitry for the elevator isn't very complicated, but it does use logic gates. And if you've never worked with these before, this might be a little bit confusing to you. I have an older wiring tutorial out on the channel that discusses these in detail, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below because I won't be going into too much detail today. 
Down here, I've placed an area for the circuitry so that we can fill this in with walls afterwards. It'll be completely dark in here and hidden away from the elevators so that we don't have to see any of it. I'm going to place down a single logic gate. And it doesn't matter what kind of gate you use because we'll be using a faulty lamp on top of it, which will turn the entire logic gate faulty. And those work with any of the lamps. Uh, the off lamp needs to be in the middle and we don't need any on lamps for this. So we're just going to use the off lamp and we're going to make this entire thing faulty. Now we're going to run a wire from the trigger logic sensor, which is this one on the side of the elevator to the top faulty lamp of that circuit down here. And what this is going to do is send a pulse down here and tell this to activate. It'll only activate if this middle lamp is turned on. Doing this won't send any signals unless the middle is turned on. So in order to do that, we're going to grab another color and I'll just pick red for this. And we're going to run this from the side of the lamp up to the detection logic sensor that we have here. So you'll see whenever I walk into the range of the sensor, that lamp in the middle turns on, which tells the elevator that I'm within range of the bottom of the floor. So that when I cross both of these at the same time, it will activate this circuit. And that will use this green wire here that I'm going to grab and it will activate the tops of every single one of these arrows. So now you'll see that when I walk into the elevator and I jump up, it carries me up to the top. We do have a slight problem with this, however, that these are now stuck in this position and we have no way of getting back into the elevator again. So this isn't complete yet. We need a way to reset these back to their original position. So I'm just going to go ahead and actuate all of these. And in order to do that, we need to detect when the player has reached the top floor. So I'm gonna grab a platform and place it above the floor by a block. And then on top of that, I'm going to place a weighted pressure plate. The reason why I use a weighted pressure plate as opposed to others is it is active whenever you're within its range. Period. The other pressure plates will activate when you walk onto them from the left and the right and when you jump onto them But they won't activate when you jump up into them from below So we have to use a weighted pressure plate here to detect whenever we're coming up the elevator And this will be our reset line So we're going to grab some yellow wire here and we're going to run this from the pressure plate down to our circuit area over here now down here, we're going to need to place another logic amp, a lo another logic gate right down here. And on top of that, we're going to place an off lamp and two faulty lamps. And I'll talk about why we need two faulty lamps later in the tutorial. And that's going to connect straight up to that pressure plate at the very top, which will send a signal telling us to reset. In order to reset, it has to be connected to this green line because as you can see here the green wires are connected to the top of every arrow which is what carries you up to the very top so those will all be active and we need them to be inactive so we grab this green wire and we connect it to the bottom of the circuit now this will only send a signal if this lamp is turned on and the only way that'll turn on is if those blocks are actuated so we need to also move that up one and connect this green wire not only to the bottom of the logic gate but to the off lamp as well so you'll see whenever we walk into here and let me zoom out a little bit we walk into here and we activate the elevator when we go back down it resets instantly and if i were to cut out this uh wire right here i could show you exactly what it's doing down here we go into here and we're carried up and you can see i cut that wire so it's not reset but since we activated these blocks, that lamp is now turned on. So if I were to rewire this reset line, the second we walk into it, those will reset and we can now make our way back down. And that is the upwards direction of the elevator complete. We can now do that in a loop over and over again. And now we need to focus on how to make it go down. From the top floor of the elevator, we have a slight problem where if you're trying to walk over this gap and you're going slowly, you're going to fall into the elevator. We want players to be able to choose when they go down and not just happen to fall down. Additionally, it's also a problem because if you go up the elevator, you can just fall straight back down. 
and that's not what we want at all. So we're going to remove one of these top two arrows. Don't remove both. We have to have one of them here, but it does not matter which one you remove. I'm just going to get rid of that one right there. And in its place, we're going to place a platform. Any platform will work. And we're also going to remove both the actuator and the wire from that because we don't want this platform to end up being actuated at all. We want it to be solid the entire time. Now, similar to what we have down here, where we have a detection mechanism and a trigger mechanism, we need to do the same thing up top. So 11 blocks away from this, again, and this has to be precisely 11 blocks away from the top arrow, we're going to place another sensor. So you can see here we're 11 spaces away, and I'm gonna grab another sensor, and we're going to place this right here, which turns out it's gonna be right next to the tip of the fifth arrow down from the top. Now that's going to be very important for the same reason that it's important to place these at a specific space apart. You need to be able to detect where you're at between both sensors at the same time. The other sensor is actually going to be a weighted pressure plate placed right on top of that platform because we have that platform there and it's very convenient. Now you'll see if I grab my mount and I go down, I can trigger both this weighted pressure plate which is currently compressed and the logic sensor at the same time. If I go down a little bit, you'll see that pressure plate pops up. And if I go up, you'll see that logic gate turns off. So both of these can be triggered at the same time. Down here in the circuit box, we're going to do the same thing that we have over here. So we'll need one logic gate for the trigger and detection mechanism and one logic gate for the reset mechanism. One off lamp on top of both of those and an faulty off lamp on top of this and two faulty off lamps on top of that. And we're going to hook these up the same way that we did above. So we're gonna grab the detection line over here and we're just gonna grab a color that doesn't end up crossing with anything. And we're going to run all of this down into this segment right here and into that off lamp so that it turns on whenever we're stepping in range of this weighted pressure plate. Now this one's even more simple. We can just hook up this trigger straight up to the other trigger because neither will activate the other unless you're at the top of the elevator or the other. So it doesn't matter if those two are connected. And then down here within the circuit box, we're just going to run this blue wire up to here. So both triggers are trying to activate both of these logic gates at the same time, but it'll only happen if you're standing at the bottom of the elevator, this one will activate. If you're standing at the top of the elevator, this one will activate. And again, we have to do the same thing with the reset line. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a wire to activate all of these blocks first. And in this case, we need to make sure we don't grab anything that's already been used here. And I'm going to grab some yellow wire for this. And we're just going to run this down the bottom of all of these as well. And then we need to hook that up to the reset line as well. So we're gonna bring this down over and up one because again, when those activate, we wanna turn this lamp on. And then when they turn off, we want to turn that lamp off. So it needs to be brought up to here. Now here's the part where you're going to be needing these double parts and the junction box. Now, if I were to just run this wire across, you can see we end up with a bunch of crossed wire here and it's really messy. And we're not gonna want that at all. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And you could also see that if I were to run this wire down here and over to here, we get a cross right here. We don't want that cross either. So we're gonna get rid of that. And that's why we have these double faulty lamps up top so that we don't get a cross wire here. And if you end up with the cross that we have here in the middle, you could just place a junction box right there in the center and it won't cross at all. Now I did this on purpose. I could have used a uh, red wire to connect all of these arrows. I just wanted to show you that if you picked your wire colors in a poor manner, it's okay. You don't need to go back and redo everything. You can use these double faulty lamps and you can use the junction box to keep everything nice and clean. So don't worry about it. If there are cross wires, you can work through that easily. Now, since these are all wired up, you could see we can go into the elevator and it resets and we can go down the elevator and it 
doesn't quite reset yet because we have not made a reset line here at the bottom. So we're just going to grab one last weighted pressure plate and don't put it over here, put it over here. And the reason for that is we're gonna connect it to the reset line, which is this yellow wire here. If we had put it one more over, it would be crossing with this right here. So now we step on that and it resets. So now we can go up and down freely. As you can see here, it doesn't reset immediately until you step off the pressure plate. But that's not going to be a problem because this is the reset line. And as we drop down, that's actually going to reset itself before you activate the trigger. So you could just go down immediately and it's not going to prevent you in any way, shape or form. So this now works completely. We can go up and down this elevator freely. The only thing that's left to do is to make this look good. It doesn't really matter how you design this. You can do whatever theme you want. You can see here I did something similar to what I did with Game Raiders and it's gonna be a sci-fi theme, but you can make this medieval, fantasy, just wacky, whatever you want. It really doesn't matter how you design it. There is something to keep in mind, however, if you make an elevator that's really long, like this one over here, it's got quite the distance to it. And say you don't have wings or something to negate fall damage, it could very well hurt or kill you. Hoik does not negate fall damage. So if you're going through a very long hoik, you're counted as in a free fall the entire way that you're going down. Now, if you're not going to be wearing something to negate your fall damage like wings, what I recommend doing at the very bottom of the elevator is placing a small row of silly balloon or pink slime. That'll give you a slight bounce and it might look a little funky, but it'll prevent you from splatting at the bottom and, you know, perishing. And that's going to wrap up this up and down hoik elevator tutorial. If you found the video helpful, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. And remember to leave a comment with your question for my Q&A segment of the milestone video, which will be airing this Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you all very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all on Saturday. I also wanted to give a huge thank you to all of my supporters, both on Patreon as well as YouTube members. I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without your help. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.